Yes. Every once in a blue moon, the Pope on Film podcast tries to catch people up on the behind the scenes world of professional wrestling. So put on your speedo and cue up your entrance music because it's time once again for the Pope on Film Wrestling News. With an emphasis on the R. With an emphasis on the R. It's not the Pope on Film Wrestling News, it's Wrestling News. There's no G in that at all. Yes. Want, Want to make it perfectly clear. First off, Vice News is currently running season three of their show, The Dark Side of the Ring, which looks at the tawdry side of professional wrestling. It's really great. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, it's it's pretty amazing. They did a two-parter on the life of Chris Benoit. Their episode on the WWF Brawl for All is really great. Uh, anywho, their latest episode is on what what's known as the Flight from Hell, and it's really caused a stink online and in the wrestling industry. In 2002, the WWE did a European tour, and they chartered a private flight for their trip back to the States. But bad weather grounded the plane, so all of these wrestlers were stuck in a private plane with an open bar and pills, and Jesus fucking Christ, things got insane. Before now... When the flight, when the flight before now, when the flight from hell was discussed, it was discussed in a way of like, oh man, these crazy wrestlers getting into trouble, boys being boys, ha! Huh? Some of them were fined, one or two were fired. It's fine, you know how wrestlers can be, but uh, it, it was a lot worse than everyone expected. Um, Ric Flair naked, wearing only a robe, doing helicopter dick. Yeah. Uh, Scott Hall might have been roofied and woke up just long enough to lick the face of a flight attendant who was later sexually assaulted by naked Ric Flair. Michael Hayes had his ponytail cut off. Um, Goldust took over the PA and started singing. Brock Lesnar got into a fight with another wrestler midair and almost uh, caused the the door to open up during the flight. It's a wildly scandalous story, but the internet is still fuming over uh, former ECW wrestler Tommy Dreamer, who was on the who was interviewed for the episode, and in the episode, Dreamer responded to the Ric Flair sexual assault allegations by saying, well, everyone gets offended by everything these days. Yeah. Which is a surprisingly right-wing way to respond to sexual assault, Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. And he he then compared the assault to his ponytail... Okay. And they asked him about the flair assault allegations, and it's like, well, you know, uh, people get offended <coughs> by everything nowadays. I mean, look at me. I have two ponytails right now. Two ponytails. There are some people watching this right now saying, hey, I, I can't believe you're wearing two ponytails. I can't believe this. I'm so upset. So, yeah, everybody gets offended by everything these days. But, yeah, you know, it, this wasn't that bad, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, WWE so is nice, now removed. Nice. You know, so sexual assault is right on par with his grooming choices. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, as a result of this, the WWE has removed all Ric Flair merchandise from their shop. You know how bad you gotta fuck up Ric Flair that they've removed all Ric Flair merch from their shop? I mean, they're selling every... They were selling everything with Ric Flair on it. I think they were selling uh, all new woo tampons. You know? And, like, the size of the tampon is dependent on how long the woo is. If you want, a, like, a petite tampon, you get a woo. And if you need a large tampon for large flow, you get the woo. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. That's for the heavy the flow days. <laughs> Yeah, the last time we saw them remove everything from their shop was when Chris Benoit killed everybody. And also, which was, uh, okay, which was a dick move. 
Yeah, it was a real dick move for Chris Benoit to kill his whole family. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I'm against that. Yeah, I, 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 I take a firm stance against family murder. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. And also, Impact Wrestling has suspended... And I stand from- by that, motherfuckers. I stand by that. You want to challenge me? I will fucking debate you anywhere, anytime. Yeah, bring it on. Bring yeah. it on. I'm sure the pro-family murder uh, people out there are already up in arms about this podcast, taking such a strong stance against murdering your family. Yes. But hey, you got to draw a line in the sand somewhere, you know? Uh, so yeah, so they removed all Ric Flair merch from their shop. Impact has suspended Tommy Dreamer, but there's no way Lesnar will ever get punished because the WWE will look the other way, just like they did with Ric Flair back in 2002. And I think it says a lot about wrestling culture that this can happen, and the WWE will fine and fire the low-tier guys and then protect the, the made men like Flair. Yeah. Uh, so that says a lot. Also, Brock Lesnar is back in professional wrestling. Why? Because it's time to dust him back off because it's Saudi Arabia time again. Surprised they don't, like, uh, dig up the corpse of Macho Man Randy Savage so he can wrestle at Saudi Arabia. Uh, Probably someday soon. I would not put it past. Yeah. Meanwhile, the WWE made an announcement that is without a doubt the most WWE thing that you'll ever hear. The, w, uh, the WWE said recently in an interview that they will be looking for new wrestling talent. From now on, they will be looking for new wrestling talent, not in the indie wrestling circuit, but from, quote, outside sources. So outside. to reiterate, Yeah, yeah. So to reiterate, the WWE will no longer be hiring wrestlers to be wrestlers. And that's the most WW. That is so WWE of the WWE that it makes me sick. And it's a good, it's a good indication of where the WWE is right now as a company. But hey, uh, it's not all bad. I've got some good news. Here's a quote from a uh, former presidential candidate uh, turned. Uh, um, member of the Biden administration, Andrew Yang. He yes. tweeted this uh, on <clears throat> September 16th, and I got giddy with glee. He tweeted, I just had a call with the Department of Labor. If you are a current or former WWE performer who feels that you were misclassified as an independent contractor, please contact this one account. And let's get you what Vince McMahon owes you. It's been a long time coming, but this storyline is real. And I just love the fact that there's someone in the Biden administration who might successfully try and take down the WWE because it's about time, you know? Yes. Like, I hated Andrew Yang until now. (laughs) Now, Big Andrew Yang fan. Also, uh, the WWE has made a small bit of news this week because uh, it, on NXT, which has been completely rebranded, by the way, and uh, it, the reason why it's been rebranded is because NXT was originally a, a, an indie show that was only available on the WWE uh, app, the streaming, WWE uh, streaming site, whatever. But uh, then AEW, their big competition, said, hey, we've got a show on TNT, and it's AEW Dynamite, and we're going to be on Wednesdays. And the WWE said, well, you know, we're number one, and we don't really see AEW as competition. We don't really have competition, and so there's no competition. Also, NXT is now going to be on the USA Network every Wednesday ex- at exactly the same time as AEW Dynamite. But again, AEW is in competition. But AEW completely wiped the floor with NXT 
So and so the WWE moved NXT from Wednesdays to Mondays and also said, uh, we're firing a bunch of people and we're completely redoing it. And it definitely has nothing to do with the fact that the, the, the NXT is being punished because they lost to AEW in the ratings because, again, this isn't a competition. We're just completely firing a bunch of people and rebranding the entire uh, thing, but it's not a competition. It's not a competition. So uh, a lot of people are getting new names and new characters, new gimmicks in NXT. And a wrestler named Joe Gacy, is uh, he's gotten a new character, and his character is basically he's a bad guy, but also he's woke now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about this guy. Yeah. And, I, I just uh, read a blurb, so I have nothing, no idea what it's about. He, he was just a typical wrestler, you know, bad guy wrestler in his, like, uh, tights and his, like, speedo, all badass. And then suddenly, last, uh, last NXT, he shows up in, like, a buttoned-up shirt and, like, khakis, and he's talking about being inclusive and uh, he understands now that, you know, we need to, it's about unity and we need to treat everyone with respect. And he's woke now and he's going to try and treat everyone as equals. And he's a bad guy. Uh, and uh, fun fact, last year, the WWE introduced a new faction called Retribution. This was a faction that premiered in the WWE during the uh, protests against police violence, okay. uh, Retribution was a faction of young people, all in black, who would just show up to Raw and SmackDown and start destroying everything because they wanted to destroy the status quo. They weren't Antifa. They were Retribution. Yes. And the year before that, in 2019... Uh, Daniel Bryan, the WWE champion, got rebranded as an evil environmentalist. He replaced the leather WWE championship belt and replaced it with a wooden, fake leather, environmentally friendly belt. Okay. And uh, I don't remember where I was going with this, but hey, here's a fact that might shock you. Vince McMahon's wife worked for the Trump administration. Yeah, you, right? you would never know that. You would never know that. Yeah. Yeah, so the WWE is pissing me off. Here's another reason to hate the WWE. They have recently announced that they're teaming up with Blumhouse, the film studio, to produce an expensive, glossy, Hollywood-type series, a bio about the life of America's greatest businessman, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Oh, my God. And this really makes me sick, because this is going to be biased as fuck, you know? And it's like, Vincent McMahon, the greatest businessman who ever lived. And then what happened? The evil government tried to take him down with a frivolous lawsuit steroids no one in wrestling has ever took them you know what this is this is probably just the government and the left trying to take the wwf down but don't worry vince mcmahon is too brave and amazing to let that stop him you know it's going to be a fucking hatchet job and it's going to be horrible but it's not all bad news because all elite wrestling aew the competition they have signed some really big names recently, including former WWE champions Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. The Big Show is there now. Sting really? is wrestling. And a bunch of other people. Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers, uh, he, he used to be the Fiend in the WWE. He might be premiering as early as this week. But uh, they're now filling 20,000-seat arenas. And they're beating the WWE, Raw and SmackDown, in the key 18 to 49 demographic right now. So the WWE is trash, but at least there's a better, viable, fresh alternative out there. And I think it's, I think it's actually 
uh, AEW is lighting a fire under WWE's ass, and it's making the WWE better. And the WWE is starting to try and do a bit more gimmicks. Like during the Monday Night Wars, like they had a big pay-per-view main event that they moved to TV, and then one of their uh, WWE World Championships was just won on television, which hasn't happened in a really long time. So yeah. the people who watch Raw are saying, oh, wow, Raw is getting a lot better. And, and yeah, but uh, AEW is in competition, is what the WWE will say to you over and over again. Anyway, I'm really excited about the wrestling industry right now because it looks like uh, the 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 old way of doing things is starting to change, and I'm excited about that, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I have a kind of a question here, though. Yes. Uh, like, why AEW and not Lucha Underground or TNA? You know what I mean? What, what, what puts the shine on the apple for AEW? that these other two promotions do not have that has uh, AEW <clears throat> now consistently beating WWE. I would say... I take drugs during the show. Keep that in mind. I would <laughs> say major network backing. Yeah. You know, like... like uh, TNA Wrestling. Catch it every week on like Spike or yeah. America First United UHF Channel 84, you know, or yeah. whatever the fuck. And then Lucha Underground was fucking amazing and fucking incredible, but it was on uh, the El Rey Network, you know? Yeah. But, but this is on TNT, and that is huge. And now... One of their shows, AEW Dynamite, will be moving to Superstation TBS, but their second show, AEW Rampage, will will still be on TBS, uh, on TNT. So they'll have one show on TNT and one show on TBS, and and those are two big, big ass networks, you know? Yeah. And they've got really big backing and advertisement on major things like. Uh, you know, uh, so so many NBA games are on TNT that that during a major NBA game, it's like, hey, be sure and check out uh, AEW Dynamite this Wednesday. And so they've got a lot of really big backing. Their last uh, show of AEW Dynamite, they sold out an arena. And it was just, it was like, the most professional I've ever seen AEW before. It yeah. looked like like a good episode of Raw or WCW Monday Nitro back in the day. It just looked good and fresh and new and exciting and, and I don't know. Plus they've just got some really good characters that I really like. Uh, Matt Hardy is there and he's got like six different personas now. Yeah. And that's good. And of course, my favorite wrestler, Orange Cassidy. He's amazing. It looks like they were going to sign Ric Flair to AEW, but I don't think that's happening now. Yeah. But anyway, that's it for the Pope on Film Wrestling News. Uh, it was difficult to write this because there's so much news. Yes. But I think I did a pretty good job. So be sure and join us next time for more. Uh, Pope on film wrestling news with an emphasis on the R which is a very important part of the title yes. and cut on that <laughs>